Good morning, Heritage family and friends. Consider this, you may be the only Bible someone else reads. This quote has been attributed to a number of people, but think about it. If you are all someone knows about Christianity, if you're all they know about the works of God and the teachings of Christ, what would they learn? Does your life show that you are living your faith, trusting in the Lord? Especially now, are you encouraged, grateful, leaning on the everlasting arms? 1 Timothy 4 and 12 reminds us to be an example to the believers in the world in conduct, in love, in spirit, and in faith. Even in seasons of darkness, let the light of the Lord shine brightly through you. Amen. Let's stay connected. Each week during our virtual worship experience, you can interact with us at 7.45 a.m. on YouTube live chat and at 10.45 a.m. during the Facebook watch party. Also, visit our website, heritagereston.org, for previous messages and other important announcements. Hey, beloved, it's Pastor Sullivan coming back to you. Listen, a couple of weeks ago on Pentecost Sunday, I preached a message entitled, Maximize the Ministry. In that sermon, I had a shirt on that looked similar to this one, and we have heard over the last couple of weeks, many of you desiring to purchase one of these shirts. That this is a shirt that we will wear as we go out and bless and minister to our communities because the work of the church is unstoppable. As the unstoppable church, we want you to connect with us in this way. So please reach out to us on heritagereston.org, heritagereston.org. On the homepage, you'll find all of the information. Last month, we mentioned that we went out to feed those that were hungry, those uh, that did not have means to purchase. On this week, on this upcoming Saturday, we have set the goal for 500 and praise the Lord, you have answered the call. You have, because of your faithfulness, we've been able to secure food for over 500 people. We need you to be a part of us. We need you to go online even now, sign up to be a volunteer. Many hands make light work. And what we want you to do on next Saturday is to wear your unstoppable church. Come on, beloved, let's show the world, let's show the community that the work of the church isn't limited to a building. The work of the church is unstoppable. This is Pastor Sullivan. Until we see you next week, be blessed. Heritage, it is time to bless the Lord with our tithes and offerings. We are all aware of the economic strain being felt across the world, and we pray diligently for the families negatively impacted. But thanks be to God, many of us have been blessed to retain our jobs, even see promotion and increase in this time. Luke 12, 48 declares that for everyone to whom much is given, much from them will be required. In these unprecedented times, we pray that you will search your hearts and give as the Spirit leads. There are multiple ways to give. On our homepage, click Give in the upper right-hand corner and use the Secure Give app or text to give by sending Love Lips and your dollar amount to 703-337-3347. You may also give through automated banking and by mailing your check to the church. We thank you in advance for your gifts of love. Now, a selection from our praise team. If you know that we serve a great God, then just stop wherever you are and give Him worship. Give Him praise. He's the giver of life. So we worship Him today. Say this. You give life. And you are love. You bring light into our darkness. You give hope. And you restore every heart. Every heart that's
Good morning, beloved. Grace and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. It's in that strong name of Jesus that we greet you this morning to come into worship. I don't know about you, but after this last week, I need to be in a place of worship. I need to connect even virtually with the saints. So come on, beloved. Let's draw close. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father and our God, holy is your name in all the earth. Lord, we just want to pause even now to thank you for being God. Thank you for being a way maker. Thank you, God, for being our strength and health. Thank you, God, for providing us one more opportunity that we can gather together virtually in this online community to witness, to testify, to celebrate the goodness that is Jesus. On today, Lord Jesus, I believe that there's something amazing that you want to speak into the heart of these, my brothers and my sisters, yea, even me, O Lord. So Lord, won't you have your own way? Do whatever it is that you want to do in these moments, God. Shift us and and shake us, God. Make us, we pray, that we might live more closely in your image that somebody, oh God, would know that we belong to you because we've heard from you. We're living for you. So it's in Jesus' name, oh God, that we give you full access to every part of our bodies. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. This is our prayer, prayed in faith, in Jesus' name. Let those that love the Lord say amen. Beloved, I'm excited once again to share the word of God with you. Won't you pull out your smartphones, pull up your Bible apps, get out your Bible if you have it. Meet me in a reading from the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12. Meet me in verse number one. Hear the word of the Lord. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Love, that's enough for us this morning. I want to preach from the topic for the time that is ours under the banner, transformed, transformed, transformed. From cover to cover, it seems society is being stretched like never before. People around the globe, beloved, are quoting out of that that unpublished book of Sister Fannie Lou Hamer, who said that I'm simply sick and tired of being sick and tired. From London to Japan, from Paris to Berlin, from the down under in Australia to the far and distant shores on the continent of Africa, the world is responding to racial intolerance uh, with a cry, with a common call saying, where there is no justice, there'll be no peace. On last Sunday, we worshiped as a family and after we said the final amen, uh, my wife and I headed uh, for a class with our children for a Sunday's lesson in civics. Uh, First Lady and I gathered the kids, got them in tow, headed downtown to connect with others uh, that believe just like we do that black lives matter. That on last Sunday, we gathered for Sullivan Family Civics, took a ride down to D.C., and as we stood on the plaza, looking eyeball to eyeball with the White House, standing with all of God's creations of colors, complexions, and hues, the Lord began to plant the seed uh, for this Sunday's message that if we're going to heal as a society, there are some things uh, that we've got to literally allow the Lord to transform. Look back, survey over these past 401 years as we remember George Floyd, remember Emmett Till, Remember four little girls in Birmingham, Alabama, Addie Mae Collins, Cynthia Wesley, Carol Denise McNair, and Carol Robertson. Uh, And then fast forward, if you will, and meet me uh, in a Bible study in a church in the Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina, where those that were gathered to study God's word were tragically taken from this life 
under the banner of hatred. And you'll know, like I know this morning, that what we need most is to transform. That too often each generation has had to live repeatedly through this constant story where we have not evolved yet as a people to be able to be steadfast and immovable in a God that is well able to transform you and I to stand in a moment like now. That for those that have been claimed by the Lord, I pray that this Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 resonates in your heart that the word of God says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is, watch this, your reasonable, my reasonable service. Stay with me. Bible goes on, Paul goes on to say, and be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul writes to the church, redeemed by Christ, freed from the controlling power of sin. Those fully persuaded that the promises of God are the promises kept by God. And Paul says to, to the called of God uh, that you've got to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Dig in with me, Sister Geneva, that that word sacrifice comes from the Greek word thusia. Let the church say thusia. Thusia is defined as an offering that is, ah, watch this, prescribed by God. Mm, not what you want to give, it's, it's what's prescribed by God. And if, if I'm honest this morning, I, I, many of us struggle with that word, struggle with the full definition of thusia, because oftentimes we want to give God what's comfortable for us to give God and not what God prescribes. God says, I want to sacrifice that God determines the sacrifice on his own terms, in his own way, and that he commands you and I to offer something more than what we sometimes want to give. God says, I'm looking for your sacrifice. It's the present that I place on the altar of God that costs me something, but, but never fully matures to the point that it can beat what God has required, that God is looking for our sacrifice. Giddy that God doesn't just want the standard of what you and I think is good. God wants a sacrifice uh, that is defined by his standard of good. Hear me, that sacrifice for a follower of Jesus Christ is more than my Sunday hallelujah, but it's how well able God is actually able to use my hands. That my, my sacrifice, beloved, has got to be more uh, than what I do as, as, as a blessing and a benefit to others. No, that my sacrifice has to be God's full ability to use every part of my being. God wants a sacrifice. What's the sacrifice, beloved? A surrendered life, a crucified flesh, a sanctified and set apart spirit. God is calling you and I to live a life of sacrifice. And that's a word for the church this Sunday morning. That's a word as we try to figure out, as we walk with the world and try to figure out how do we respond in the midst of so much unrest. And God says, it begins in what you offer back to me that what I'm waiting for is your sacrifice. And I just wish you'd allow me to just talk to you, pull up on the couch with you, pull up in your office this morning and just say it like the Lord gave it, that, that, that there's got to be a new strategy. There's got to be something different in how we respond. Uh, that, that God's looking for a more tactical response from those that claim themselves, that call themselves followers of Christ, that God is looking for our very lives. That if you want to make a difference, if you want to be the difference, beloved, 
We can only be the difference when we first give God our lives. That's where the change begins. Before we get out on, on those streets, before we begin to march, before we lift our voice, we better first surrender our lives to the hand of our creator, the one that has fashioned us, the one that has made us, the one that has called us, the one that has claimed us, the one that says that what I'm looking for most is full access to your life. Hear the word. The Bible says not only to present your lives as a living sacrifice. If you jump down into that second verse, the Bible says, and do not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You want to hear it again? Won't you flip over to 1 John chapter 2? I'm going to paraphrase it, but it says it like this. We're in the world, beloved, but we're not of the world. And oftentimes, we only take that, that statement, take that passage to mean uh, the things, the, the things, the Christian list of things that, that I ought not do. But beloved, there's more things that, that God has for us than the things that we ought not do. There are some things that, that the Lord, in fact, is calling us to do because we're Christians. That it's time, beloved, as Christians to transform the culture. It's time for us as Christians uh, to transform the uncivilized way in which we treat one another. That it's time, beloved, as Christians for us to be more than just offended by injustice, it's time for us as Christians to be God's living standard. Have you ever noticed, have you noticed that over these last few years, the vitriolic vernacular that has now characterized our national mother tongue, have you, have you noticed over these past few years how everything seems permissive, how you can say anything and do anything, call anybody anything that you want, and nobody seems to hold anybody accountable. Have you noticed, beloved, as I've noticed, that there seems to be a diminished standard to our lives that, that God uh, wants to call us this morning, he challenges us this morning to not be satisfied with the status quo of how we've been living, that, beloved, he has well equipped us to transform, transform the world. The Bible says, be not conformed, be ye transformed. Let me break that down. That conformity literally means that, uh, that something is designed by nature to blend in. That, that conformity is designed to take the shape, the contour, and the context uh, of another alternate being. That secular conformity is the most inauthentic form of godly representation that anybody dare to possess. That to be a Christian, beloved, calls us to a higher standard in God to not conform to the context of this world. That Paul says, God has not created us to conform, but he has created us to transform. God's got a greater usefulness for you and for me. That God, uh, that God wants us not to conform to the shape of this world, but that the shape of this world would transform to the conformity of God. That let me pitch this one over the plate to you this Sunday morning, that, that I know this isn't popular, but, but God has not designed the church to be transformed by the culture, uh, but, but for the culture to be transformed by the church. That God says, beloved, that I have created you in my image to, to bear my witness, to, to be salt and light in the places where I've placed you to stand so that you don't conform to the image of the world, but that the world would be transformed to the image of God. That what God is calling for us to do, beloved, is to transform the world. That a part of the understanding of the assignment is acknowledging and then accepting that in too many places of influence, we as Christians have not stood up to be an accurate portrayal of God's reflection. 
too many times, beloved, the world has had to wonder where it is that we really stand. That's why some of us sit here still wondering why we see bad legislation come out of our politics, that why it seems that racism continues to run rampant throughout this land, that why we, we continue to experience police brutality on every leaning hand and, and give it a nod and a pass. And beloved, I challenge you this morning that if we stood up as the body of Christ, if we stood up and lived out our faith more fully, that if we stood up and were salt and light in places that are dark, in places that have lost their taste for God, that you and I would be able to transform this world for God. That too far, too many of us ah, blink our eye and, and go on about our way and don't address the food insecurity in our land. Too many of us don't engage our children that are digitally disconnected from a greater world all around them. That too many of us, beloved, don't raise the Christian standard and challenge the status quo norm so that we can, in fact, make a change for God. That it was Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that said to a country, to a nation, to a conscience that seemed to be in contention, that what we have, beloved, is the fierce urgency of now. We cannot afford to not stand up as the body of Christ now. I was in a conversation this past week with one of the ministers of our church, and she lamented to me that one of the failures from the preceding generation is now that this generation has to take care of the unfinished business of the past generation. That, beloved, it's time for us to transform the world. What does it mean uh, to transform the world? The, the Bible says, Paul says, that, that if you want to transform uh, if you want to be a part of transformation, it only comes by the renewing of your mind. Go slow and hear me. That transformation comes by the renewing of our mind. That transformation, before it begins in the world, it begins with you and me. It begins in a transformed mind. It begins in a transformed definition of love. It begins with a transformed understanding of forgiveness. It begins with a transformed understanding of, of what unity really means, that, that the Lord wants to transform us so that we can transform this world. That it doesn't take much to conform. It's cowardly to conform. The Lord has called us to demonstrate a greater strength, to transform. You're probably wondering this morning, what does that word really mean, transform? Transformation is a radical shift, an about face, a thorough and a complete makeover from the inside out. To be unrecognized as you once were, so that you can be known as you are now. That God wants us to be transformed so that we no longer will be recognized as we once were, but that we will be identified by whom we are identified and imaged now. What am I really trying to say? That the only way to transform the world is to transform our understanding of what it really means to be a Christian. I'm a Christian because I love God. I'm a Christian because I'm saved by grace through faith. I'm a Christian because I've given the Lord my life. But I'm also a Christian, beloved, because I'm concerned with what's going on in the world all around me. I'm also a Christian, beloved, because I care about my neighbors just as myself. I'm, I'm a Christian, beloved, because I can't sit on the sidelines and watch injustice continue to happen. I'm a Christian, beloved, because in Christ I found my voice. That, that our Christianity doesn't end with a march. Our Christianity begins with a march. Our Christianity moves 
unto our places of employment. Our Christianity is seen and demonstrated in our home. Our Christianity is evidenced in our conversations with coworkers and friends, that, that our Christianity is our protest. Our Christianity lifts high a standard. Our Christianity is how the world will know that we belong to the Lord. Can I tell you why I'm a Christian? I'm a Christian because I believe uh, God is still raising up this standard and I'm committed to following in his path. Let me tell you the difference. Let me share and unpack sometimes why it's hard to live in a place of transformation. Because Paul says that you ought to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But beloved, I challenge you that it's hard to be transformed in the renewing of your mind if you've not first been transformed in your heart. That where we need to do the greater work is to allow the Lord to completely make over our heart. Transform my heart means that God has access to the deep places within my heart, the things that aren't necessarily seen by men, but known by God, that God has the ability to do a complete and thorough work on my heart. Many of us, that's the work we need. No matter how many times we, we deny it, no matter how many times we think that we've mastered it, that what we need daily is a renewing of our mind and our heart. That as God's people, as this nation, as members of the body of Christ, we need a transformed heart so that we can have a renewed mind, so that we're able to have a transformed conversation and experience new relationship. This never works, beloved, as long as I divide and separate you and me, that this doesn't work as long as I other you and raise myself higher than, than you, that what it means to have a transformed mind is to know that in our heart that each of us belong to God. Each of us are part of his family. Each of us have eternal value, that for each of us, he gave the precious gift of his life. The beloved, God can't use us for greater service unto him until we offer him our heart. I like how that songwriter, Tasha Cobb, says it. She says, change me, O God. Make me more like you. Change me, O God. Wash me through and through, create in me a clean heart so that I, so that I can be used by you. I just wonder this Sunday morning, is there more to your protest? Is your protest just about injustice? Or do you protest to live a better life. That life only comes through the gift of Christ Jesus who died on the cross for you and for my sin. That gift comes from the eternal security in knowing that his love is anchored and secured by an eternal forgiveness that calls you and I to be a part of his family. I invite you even now. Come on, beloved, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, the one that has created us, shaped us, molded us, placed us in this moment. God, it's not by chance that any of us are here. But it's because of your great design, because you have a greater assignment in the earth for us to fulfill. 
God, I know that that assignment can't come forth without me presenting myself fully to you. So God, on this, in this time of worship, perhaps there's one that's been on the outside. Perhaps there's one, God, that have been holding on to the wrong things. Perhaps there's one, God, that's never presented their life to your hand. I pray this morning that, Lord, you would give them the courage, give them the assurance. God, give them the words to just say, Jesus, I put my life in your hands. Transform us, God. Transform our hearts. Transform our minds through the renewing power. Transform, oh God, our actions that we might live before your people. Lift high a more excellent standard. Make a way, oh God, for unbelievers to receive the gift of salvation. This we pray in the blessed name of Christ who loved us so much that while we yet were sinners, while we had yet to make a decision for him, you made a decision for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Beloved, this morning, I invite you to do the work of being the church. I don't know what your life story has been. I don't know what your road, what your path, what your journey has had happened along the way. But I want to connect with you this morning. We want to connect with you this morning as a family in Jesus to do a transformative work for the Lord through the power of his love. You hear the Lord as you hear the Lord call you, tap you on your shoulder this morning. I would that you just reach out to us at lovelifts at heritagereston.org. Put in that subject line, I'm ready to be transformed. We'll reach out to you, we'll pray with you, we'll stay before God with you and walk with you as we do the work of kingdom building here on earth. May the Lord bless you this Sunday morning. May the Lord keep you this Sunday morning. May the Lord transform and stretch you this Sunday morning until each of us fit the image of him. God bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. We'll see you next week. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. We invite you to join us each Wednesday in June at 7 p.m. for the Faith and Film series. Together, we will watch portions of Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy and discuss issues of race, theology, and how we can grow as a congregation. We'd love for you to join us daily for morning prayer. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We look forward to engaging with you. Have a blessed week.